On today's episode, I pick up my Evo from CBRD. Many of you are probably wondering, wait a second, Peter's got an Evo? And yeah, I do. I've actually owned this car for quite some time. Uh, when I was living in California, working for Modified Magazine, it was a project car there. And what ended up happening is the magazine got closed, the car got shipped up to CBRD to have some work done. So let's go inside, we'll take a tour of CBRD and check out my Evo. CBRD is Chad Block Racing Development, and it's housed in a massive 17,000 square foot facility that's always meticulously clean every time I visit. As you can see, CBRD's main focus is on Evos and GTRs, but they also play around with all types of vehicles. Service isn't exactly CBRD's bread and butter, it's actually parts development such as turbo kits, which I'll let Chad explain in a moment, but first, let's take a quick peek at my 2003 Mitsubishi Evolution 8. I ended up buying an Evo 8 because after owning an Evo 10 for some time, I wanted a more raw and visceral driving experience, and that's exactly what the Evo 8 delivers. Those of you with a keen eye will notice I did an EVO 9 front bumper conversion as well as the JDM rear bumper. 18 by 9.5 plus 22 gram light 57D wheels on Advan Neova rubber along with JRZ RS coilovers round out most of the suspension mods. The front brakes received an upgrade courtesy of StopTech while the inside is all stock aside from the personal steering wheel. As for the engine bay, well, Chad. Block himself, the man himself here, will explain everything to us. Hey, Chad. How are you? Good. Good. This is uh, been a long project for us here for Pete and the guys. Yeah, from Speedy tell me about it. So, uh, what we did was it took some time. We did a, a 2.2 liter stroker motor in this uh, Evo 8, uh, complemented with uh, some different camshafts and, and valve springs and whatnot, uh, and I believe a head games. Uh, pocket port head. That's right. Uh, it has the new, uh, for actually for this year, our new CBRD RBX kit, which is a uh, inch and a quarter runner, 304 stainless back purge manifold with a full three inch downpipe, uh, running a GTX 3071 Garrett uh, turbocharger with a, with a V-band hot side. So, uh, pretty neat. What's the advantage of a uh, V-band? Well, no, uh, no bolts and no hardware to seize. It's really good, good advantage for track cars where you see a lot of up and down temperature ranges. Um, you know, you're, you're using one ceiling surface and a clamp as opposed to uh, two ceiling surfaces with a gasket and a bunch of bolts, which Excellent. tends to be problematic. So, uh, this gets kind of neat. I mean, it's just it's a lot more compact. We always recirculate our wastegates back into the downpipe. We feel there's a good scavenging effect there. Uh, also, it keeps noise in check for guys that are, are worried about uh, volume levels and whatnot. Uh, and then we went ahead and redid some piping, custom piping with a nice blow-off valve recirculation. We don't, we don't really believe in uh, bending things to atmosphere for proper drivability. And uh, other than that, the car is uh, its pretty awesome. It's very responsive, good pairing for the 2.2 liter, uh, good good cam profile, everything just works really well in this car. And tuned it by you? Tuned by us, yep, absolutely. It's on a uh, Tefra uh, MAF ROM with multiple MAF switching and uh, gear dependent boost. Uh, so it should suit well for the street and the track. Uh, and drivability wise, uh, startup and everything's pretty much like stock, so. Sweet. Well. Yeah. I can't wait to drive this thing. Unfortunately, it's gonna have to wait till after winter because this sucker's going straight home into the storage unit. But let's move on. Let's see what else CBRD has going on here. And here we have an Evo 10, which has another CBRD turbo kit. Yeah, so this one, uh, this is a 2010 Evo 10 GSR. So it's the five speed. Uh, this car is in here basically to get all of our new, uh, for 2015 and 16, uh, Borg Warner EFR 7163 base turbocharger kit. Uh, this car previously had one of our stock housing turbochargers on it, and our customer uh, Ryan wanted a little bit better response, more peak power, and just something new. So this car was rebuilt, originally had all CBRD products, piping intake, uh, intercooler, and everything that we built probably back in 2009 and 10 when this car was brand new. Uh, now this has our new intercooler piping, uh, three inch intake with the big bell mouth, new front mount with our Venturi inlets where we put radius round uh, material in each inlet to the uh, intercooler to, to decrease uh, pressure drop and give us better flow. And then it's Very got cool. the, yeah, something pretty neat that we now made standard on all of our intercoolers. So um, definitely works well, quicker spool up. And this has the new uh, 7163 EFR turbocharger from Borg Warner. 
It's about 60 to 62 pounds per minute uh, billet compressor wheel. And this one is actually a T4 twin scroll internally waste gated kit. Um, it's complete bolt on. It actually can, if you wanted to, bolt up to a factory air box, factory intercooler pipe, and factory exhaust system. Um, we have done that on cars and made well over uh, 500 horsepower through the stock air box and everything else. So, wow. very compact design. Uh, it's nice and easy. It'll fit up with you know, companies AMS, Cobb, uh, ETS, the other guys that make piping like we do would actually bolt up to anybody's existing parts. Uh, and it's good for about 150 wheel horsepower over a stock tuned turbo um, and spools basically 150 RPM slower. So no kidding. So what's this car make for power on the old uh, Heartbreaker? On the Heartbreaker, <laughs> yeah. One of these uh, 2010 like this is about 210 wheel horsepower stock in our dyno. Generally with all the bolt-ons and everything, you make about 290 to 300 here. Uh, this car's making 430 uh, right now, 25 wow. pounds, 93 octane stock cams. The motor has not been touched internally. Uh, it's simply intercooler piping, manifold turbo downpipe injectors in the tune. So uh, pretty neat. Uh, we're, we're very excited about it. I mean, considering that a you know 2013-14 Nissan GTR makes about 410 to the wheels here, uh, it's a pretty potent little package. So. so this is a GTR killer setup. Stock one, of course. Yes. And here we have the R35 GTR CBRD spec. Chad, why? Well, we entered the GTR market in 2009 uh, with the 2008 model when it came out and built some of the first US made mid pipes, uh, the first radiator cooling solution that was very popular with track guys and drag guys. Uh, and then, you know, the market scared everybody with the transmissions, uh, giving them problems and so forth before companies like Shepard Transmission were building them. We kind of get out of the market and pursued our, our avenue with the Evo and Subarus and, and just decided last year that it was probably about time now that they were fully accessible as far as transmission builds and, and software to come back after the market and do things a little bit different. Uh, being as we're a company that doesn't, you know, really just focus on drag racing and so forth, we really wanted to overcome the ideology that the GTR is not a good track car. Um, everybody says it's heavy, it's it's this, it's that, it's not nimble, and, and we truly feel that if it's approached properly, any car can be made into a good track car. So uh, with some partnerships we have, uh, we have some unique things going on with this, such as 2012 uh, DBA chassis. Um, so we decided to get together with some of our technical partners in the industry uh, from our motorsport background and build some new and unique parts. So uh, this is actually the first Brembo Motorsport GT uh, brake upgrade that was made for the Nissan GTR we developed in a direct relationship with Brembo Motorsport and it's actually a four piston caliper design down from the stock six piston um, but it's a mono block basically billet motorsport caliper that's made to have more thermal capacity than a factory style. That setup. sounds crazy. Four pistons breaking better than six? Yeah. I don't know if the internet can handle that. Exactly. That's, <laughs> we knew that would be the response. Um, you know, and, and, and it works well. This is basically a caliper that's used on like a Grand Am car uh, for endurance racing. And the idea is to be able to use a, a thicker, uh, higher thermal capacity pad along with the rotor. So these pads are almost an inch thick compared to a factory pad, which is a little over a half inch. So um, lightweight, lighter per corner, still clear the factory wheels and amazing brake capability. Also the consumption or consumable rate of these when you take them to the track is a lot less as far as pad and rotor replacement compared to some of the other things that are out there. So that's pretty unique. So it's a front caliper and rotor pad line set up the rear is just a Brembo uh, caliper I'm sorry Brembo rotor with a different pad and line <clears throat> the other thing that's unique is this is a custom set of forge line machined GT1 wheels this is something like you'd see on the Magnus Motorsport uh, Grand Am Porsches but in the center lock this is actually still a five lug um, it was custom machined for us by our friends at uh, forge line they are 20 by 10 and a half and 20 by 11 and a half uh, but weigh in under 20 pounds so wow. they are definitely a motorsport type setup um, lightweight, a lot of cooling, um, and obviously need styling. So, and they're done in our signature blue with, you know, with the CBRV logo. And so. what about these vents? Well, the events, it's a, it's a whole different aspect of the track use of a GTR. They tend to overheat. The transmission cooling is tied in with the radiator cooling. There's a whole loop that goes on. Uh, AMS has a really unique uh, cooling solution for these. It's very intricate, works really well. We just wanted to approach this a little bit different uh, than our friends over there did. So we started to do some air channeling at the front of the car, basically to alleviate the pressure being trapped and heat being trapped and not allowing it to move properly. So the GTR is a lot of a lot of mechanical devices packed into the front opening of the car. You have intercoolers, you have an AC condenser, you have a radiator, and again, all sharing common cooling solutions. So we're in the middle of developing a, a new a new line for this. We have a new version radiator in here that replaced our old version uh, that cools slightly better. It's a bolt-in application, but we're actually getting ready to relocate the intercoolers and some cooling to the rear of the car uh, to separate those those cooling systems into an independent system as opposed to 
to one loop, uh, which would make a big impact. And so, the engine right now is the engine stock, stock at right? the moment. Correct. Yeah, we're actually getting ready to uh, uh, to do a built motor in this car and the trans through Shepard transmission. Um, but right now we were working on some of the other cooling solutions and brake evaluation on the car. Hey, that's um, the way to go fast, right? Yeah, one thing at a time. So uh, you know, and then is anything else on the car that's kind of unique? One thing is the uh, there's a set of JRZ RS Pro two ways on here that were custom valved for us. They're kind of a CBRD edition. Uh, that gives slightly better everyday road manners, um, but also have amazing track performance. So those are available along with the wheels and brakes. Um, some of the other unique things are we actually converted the car to have paddle shift on the steering wheel uh, as opposed to on the column because uh, having raced previously, uh, I like to have the paddles as close to my hands at any point in time. Uh, yeah, I saw that the work spell. Yeah, it's a, very yep, cool. Yep, very nice uh, actual hub adapter for this car. And then we, uh, again, the paddle shift conversion works well with the, it's an AIM GT3, uh, 360 uh, data steering wheel, which has a CAN bus input uh, that actually can put all of the information from all the data channels up on the steering wheel. Uh, and then we printed an actual uh, board for the car so that we can still use the car's cruise control buttons and all the functionality on that aftermarket. Amazing. Wheel. So essentially you can, it's like a gauge setup yeah, right in the is. center of the steering wheel. Yep. GTR has that nice, uh, you know, gauge setup that the guys that designed Gran Turismo did yeah. originally. <laughs> um, but that steering wheel actually has programmable LED sequential shift lights in the rim of the wheel uh, that are programmable by gear, RPM, and color sequence, which is really nice to have right in your field of vision while you're driving on the track. We've had the argument of, Put the car in automatic mode, let it do it, let it do its own thing, which at the, at the drag strip I think is the ideal way to go. Um, on the road course, a lot of people don't realize an upshift or downshift at an inopportune or opportune time can really make a big weight transfer uh, on the car that you really want to be in control of the actual shifting yourself. So all those things were done with that in mind um, to kind of just make this a more dynamic track car. Uh, so we'll see what, what happens with it, but we're still working through development. Yeah, and it looks pretty damn awesome in my books. For all the Subaru fans, we've got ourselves a Borg Warner EFR kit, right? Yeah, we do. Actually, uh, you know, going along with the scheme that we have here at CBRD recently, where we put a lot of emphasis and a lot of, uh, you know, motivation into working with Borg Warner, uh, the 7163 has really just impressed us as an overall package uh, from a compact aspect, from the integration with a built in blow off valve, uh, boost control solenoid, internally waste gated. Uh, so we decided to share the love a little bit with the, the Subaru crowd. So uh, fortunately, we have an Evo customer that we did a build for recently. He also had an STI and uh, doing a built motor in the car at the same time presented us the opportunity to, to build this kit. So what we have is a, uh, it's a built 2.5 block uh, out of a 2009 STI with a set of GT spec Tomai style uh, equal length headers and a 7163 internally wastegated FV housing, which is their V-band in, V-band out housing. So this is actually bolted up to a parent inlet pipe, so basically a stock turbo inlet pipe, 2.4 inch, uh, and has a 90 degree coupler that mates right up to the factory intercooler. So very well integrated. We're still in the process of jigging different versions of up pipes. This kit will be available for the GT Spec Tomai style equal length and unequal length manifolds, which have a nice big three bolt up, up, excuse me, up pipe flange here. And then we're also gonna have one that will bolt up to the factory two bolt uh, exhaust manifold. So we're firm believers in equal length headers on these things. A lot of the Subaru guys don't like it because they lose the sound. Uh, however, being form follows function, we like to do whatever we can to improve the performance. So we're basing this kit right now on the equal length, but it will be available for everything. So it'll be turbo, up pipe, down pipe, uh, possibly a set of headers, depending on what our customers have. Power wise, it just depends on yeah, turbo power -wise, size. And yeah, these motors, I mean, on our dyno, we can we won't even bolt a turbo to them without building the motor, because um, most people know that the uh, the Subaru motors have ring land issues and so forth. So if you don't, uh, you find out pretty quickly when you have one. Yeah. So uh, this will probably be good, I would say, crank horsepower wise in the low end, uh, 450 up to 600 horsepower, maybe 650, depending on how it's turned up. But, uh, you know, we'll see. We're actually going to have the car on the dyno later this week and we'll get some results posted. Very cool. We'll make sure to post those on our Facebook page. So here's a real treat. Check this turbo out. Man, that is a massive massive snail there attached to a BMW engine that Mark, Chad's right-hand man at CBRD, is building. So tell us a little bit about this project here, Mark. So this project, um, basically my first car was a 1987 uh, BMW 535 IS uh, E28 chassis. Um, I, had I that. like those. Yeah, <laughs> I had that. Ended up totaling it when I was young and dumb. Um, but I bought another one and I wanted to turbocharge it. But back then I was about 19 um, for the second car and I just didn't really have the skills or know-how to turbocharge it. Turbo kit never happened, sold the car. You know, fast forward 
what, 20 years or 15 years, whatever yep. later. And uh, now that I'm doing this every day, I'm like, you know what? I wouldn't mind getting one of those cars again and really kind of going crazy with it. So I, uh, my buddy of mine found the car, lower mileage, uh, single owner, not the cleanest car, but you know, pretty nice. Oh, it looks pretty damn good um, in, in uh, E28 standards, I think. Yeah, right, right. So I picked it up and I actually daily drove it for two years um, and uh, put 30,000 miles on. It was pretty reliable. And uh, then I decided to take it off the road and really kind of start digging into my project with it. So uh, this is actually another motor that I just got from a junkyard. I kind of just bought it as a dummy motor to mock up on. Um, the original motor is still in the car. And then I actually have some other motor pieces that are being built for it. Um, but basically my goals are a thousand wheel horse with it. Um, well, which, with this turbo, it looks like that's going to be achievable. Yeah, it's a Garrett GTX 4202. Um, the GTX 42 comes in two sizes. This is the larger size and it's a tile turbine housing. And, and you've done all the fabrication yourself on this puppy? Yep, as of right now, I've that done everything awesome. on it. Um, I'm kind of new to fabricating, but um, this is a good way for me to kind of practice without doing it on customer cars. Um, so this is kind of how I can express, uh, I guess, my creative side. Yeah, <laughs> and tell us a little bit about the boat over here. Okay, so the boat... Because I've been fairly... I'm a noob, let's just say that, to the power boat market, and this one sure. with the big V8 has me very, very curious. So this is an old 1985 Cimarron jet boat. Um, it's a 16 foot long boat, which is, you know, pretty short. Um, I have a kayak that's 14 and a half feet, so. <laughs> um, but it has a small block. It's actually a Buick motor in it. Um, this boat was originally built with a Chevy 350. At some point in time, someone replaced the motor. This is actually a Buick 305, so it's actually a little bit smaller than what it was originally built for. Um, but it's still pretty fast. Uh, I haven't dined with the motor or anything. I estimate it. it's probably around 200 crank horse, which really is not much at all. There's not too much done to the motor. But it's a lightweight boat. It's a very lightweight boat. You can actually pick up the front of it. Um, but it'll do 50, 50 plus miles an hour on the water. That's and pretty fun. Seeing as it's so small, it feels pretty pretty hairball. And how does the drive line work on this thing? <clears throat> so this is a jet drive. Um, which is why it's called a jet boat, correct? Yeah, <laughs> basically in this housing, it has a big impeller, which kind of looks like a big turbo wheel, a turbo compressor wheel. And it actually sucks water from underneath the boat, uh, compresses it through the, the impeller and shoots it out the nozzle here. Which is um, what causes the propulsion. Correct, yeah. And for reverse, you have this bucket. Um, when you're going forward, the bucket comes up, which gives you forward thrust. And for reverse, the bucket comes down, which actually shoots water out this front nozzle. And there's actually no neutral. The neutral is actually, it'll be giving you forward thrust and reverse thrust at the same time to kind of hold wow. your steering. Um, so it's direct drive, no neutral, there's no rudder. You can only steer if you're throttling it. So it's kind of a little bit different to drive. Sounds like a hairy driving experience. For sure. Well, you guys, we just all got schooled on what it's like to own a jet boat. Well, that wraps the tour here at CBRD. The Evo's loaded up on the trailer. I've got about an eight hour trek home and then it's off to hibernation. So sadly, you're not gonna see much of it in the coming months, but in the springtime, she'll be back out and we'll do some testing with it. As always, remember, hit it, give us a like if you like this video. If not, let us know why in the comments. Otherwise, check out our Facebook, Instagram, and check out CBRD as well because they build some pretty badass cars here. <laughs>